When the morning comes, I can see her shadow, reflecting in the warm sunlight, dancing in the soft grass, her brown eyes reflect in the light. She cries honey tears, she whispers songs of the past, her laugh is haunting and pure. She makes these white walls tremble, chrysanthemum, 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 are you still here? We stand, arms at our sides, eyes focused forward, heads turned upward. The field is quiet and dark, and we wait. As we count the flowers in their neat rows, admire their delicate, different features, because they are perfect, just like us. We stand in our sea of uniformity, green celestial bodies pressed against each other, Watching the flowers slowly wilt, hearing soft breaths, we stand in our sea of uniformity, watching the sky fall. When we were younger, we lay on the soft grass, the folds of our palms gathering fallen leaves like scattered memories. The odor of childhood hung around our heads. Skid knees and scooter burns, sun-kissed skin, crocodile tears. We watch the clouds as the wind changes, as the sky darkens, as the rain begins to fall. I stood by it all until it was time to board the ship. We were tied to the mast hand in hand. She looks at me and asks, why am I afraid? It's my time, she said. It's my time to walk the plank. The silence rests on my lips as she floats away into a deep nothingness. Sunshine on the windowsill, it makes me happy, like I know I should be. Like summertime, spring rain, dewy grass and early mornings. But every time I close my eyes, I see her face. Her sparkling eyes the size of the moon. She makes me want to sit and stay. Because when I do, she sits beside me and dries my tears. I love you till the day that I die. My sunflower. We watch the mountains grow, standing from below. In the deep caves beneath, listening to the echoes of lost time. Hiding next to our shadows stitched underneath our feet, we cradle the lilies, petals scattered by the wind. If you listen closely, you can still hear the stifled whispers telling the secrets of the sky. When we reach the top, we can see a myriad of constellations. Wanna go on a walk?
So when I knew that Jeff and I were going to have our first child, my oldest child, Louise, we were very happy. We we're so happy about it. We've been married for a couple of years and something we both knew was really important to us. But as I went through the process of being pregnant and started looking at books or talking to people, I realized that I really didn't know very much about babies. Um, my friends that had kids didn't live near me, so I didn't spend a lot of time with babies. And as time went on, I realized I had so much to learn about taking care of little tiny babies. And so a couple of weeks before my due date, I went in for my normal exam with my OBGYN and he took my blood pressure and it was very high. And he said, okay, this hopefully will pass. Go home, go to bed, come back tomorrow morning. We'll take it again. Hopefully it's nothing. The next morning, my friend Liz picked me up and took me to the doctor and it was just as bad. And he said, okay, go home come back tomorrow morning, and if your blood pressure isn't better by tomorrow morning, tomorrow you're having your baby. And he said, okay, this is it. Drive over to Cedars, you're having your baby today. And I remember how strange and truly miraculous it was that I had this little person that was in my care, um, this little baby. And so we drove home with this little baby in this back seat, baby seat. And we got out of the car and walked in the house and the little baby holders like a little baby bucket. And we put the baby bucket on the floor and we just looked at each other. And <laughs> Jeff said to me, he said, well, now what do we do? And I said, I don't know. <laughs> so it was incredibly stressful because she was so little um, and looked so fragile, but babies are so much tougher than you think. Um, so those first few days were quite an adventure. Um, and it took a while I remember the first several nights, maybe weeks, and this even happened with, with Claire, with my younger child. When you have little tiny babies, they don't really know how to sleep well yet, so they kind of twitch and kind of hiccup and make little sounds. And you hear every little thing and you think, oh, is something wrong, is something wrong? Um, and it's usually nothing wrong, but you don't know that, and you're tired, and you're kind of scared, and it's a miracle we all are here to talk about it, because it seemed impossible at the time. And then, you know, you get all used to it, and the baby gets a little bigger, and it's silly. How something that literally every human being on the earth has been a baby and been mothered with someone, that mothering a baby would seem so strange. But it did. When did you realize your passion for traveling? 
Well, when I was little, my mother and I traveled a lot. She took me to Africa when I was 10. I went to Greece when I was 13. She was always taking me on road trips out west to the Grand Canyon and dude ranches. So I really, I grew up traveling. What places did you travel and live in after college? Um, well, during college, I lived in Mexico and Ecuador and Chile and a little bit in Argentina. And then after college, I lived in Cambodia and Berlin in Germany and Nicaragua. Of those places, which is your favorite? I can't say that I have a favorite. I really would love to get back to Chile. Cambodia was probably the most extraordinary and adventurous and strangest place that I lived. That's for sure. Do you have any specific memory or story that you'll always remember from one of these places? Gosh, so many. Uh, I remember riding on the top of buses like down to the jungle in Ecuador and thinking that we were going to fall off and plunge to our deaths. Um, I remember being on a 30-hour bus ride to the desert, clawing at the walls. <laughs> and I just remember the extraordinary beauty of the Atacama Desert. I don't know. There's a billion memories I have from travel. I'm in touch with a lot of the people that I traveled with. I think traveling really bonds you. Both the good things that you do and uh, the bad experiences actually that you can laugh about afterwards. In your opinion, what's the best part about living abroad? Best part about living abroad is really getting to immerse yourself in the culture. I know that sounds completely cliche, but it's true. Um, and to feel at home in a place that isn't your home uh, becomes a very expanding feeling. Also, if you're trying to learn the language, it's like the only way. Hi guys, my name is Jalen. I'm a senior and this is my documentary slash interview from Advanced Film last semester. Um, I interviewed my friend Olivia back w when we had like formed a pod together and been quarantining with each other in mind and like had been tested recently. So I like sat her down and asked her a few questions and my goal of this was really to like generate more of a conversation than just me asking questions and her answering and that be it. And I feel I really accomplished that, so I'm, I'm proud of this. So, thank you for watching. <laughs> Let me do it really quick. Stop laughing! I'm not gonna look at you, I'm looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Olivia. With Twitch, when I first started streaming, I don't know, it just, it really felt so natural to me. Because this is the weird thing, is I remember when I first started out, like, maybe like, when I got like my first 100 followers, they like, said right off the bat, like, you're kind of a natural at this. I always kind of wanted to do something on social media, like I tried kind of posting like seeing videos on Instagram, that didn't work. I tried posting videos on YouTube, that didn't work. TikTok worked for a while and I got like literally over 100,000 views on multiple videos and then they shadow banned me. So like, but with all of those, I just, I liked them all. Like I still, like I'm planning on making a YouTube so that when I'm not streaming, people can go watch my YouTube and like stuff. I'm trying, I'm trying to branch out, you know, you know? Synergy. Synergy. I'm trying to be like all business savvy here, but <laughs> girl boss, <laughs> girl boss. Marlboro really said girl boss. Um, I hope Marlboro invites me to come be a speaker one day, <laughs> so I can talk about my streaming. I think in quarantine it was hard for me to have things in my day that I looked forward to, and that all changed with streaming. Like I would wake up in the morning and like genuinely look forward to that night when I could start my stream, and um, that's just been really good for my mental health, especially in quarantine. <laughs> I try to have a lot of variety in my streams. I do streams with my friends. I play games. I sing songs. I do a lot of music streams. That's like the majority of what I do. I do makeup streams. I um, 
do like just chatting streams. So I try to have a lot of variety in my content too, which I think helps keep things like interesting. One of my favorite things I've done recently was for Halloween, like a week, a week before Halloween, I did a pumpkin carving stream with my other streaming friend. His name is Gal. Gal and I did a stream together and he like dressed up in a Santa costume for Halloween. And we just like carved a pumpkin together and it was one of my most popular videos. The, the only thing I would say that is different between like normal me and like me when I'm streaming is like, I just try to have more energy because it's kind of like, I always say this, but streaming is almost like a one-sided conversation. Like I do have the chat and like people put in comments for me to like work off of in a conversation type thing. But if no one's in the chat, I just have to keep this conversation running by myself. So it's like, I've gotten very used to just like taking out awkward pauses and just like being able to continue talking. I need my analytics. <laughs> it, it went down during a part, but that's fine. I need my analytics. <laughs> Look at this graph. Look at this graph. You know, um, <laughs> I do know that there are some people who are like jealous of like, me so they're always like oh you're only like popular because like you're a girl and you're like pretty and i do genuinely think that's part of it i think appearance matters because like you know you just see the little thumbnail of the live stream and if you see someone you know if you see someone with cool hair you see someone with like nice makeup on you might like be more inclined to click on it so i think that's part of it all of my like streaming friends that are girls we talk about this a lot of just like i think it, one it is easier to grow on twitch if you are a girl um, but yeah, I think it's, it is a little bit weird because I think people feel like they can just comment on my appearance no matter what. Like I do, I start most of my streams doing my makeup so people know what I look like without makeup on. Um, and I have a lot of people coming in and kind of like shaming me for wearing makeup. And then some people who are like, you know, mean to me if I'm, if I am, if I'm not wearing makeup, they're like, wow, ugly, your nose is too big, or like, you look like a boy. <laughs> it's, it, it is very focused on appearance, I would say. There is part of it where it does make me feel kind of confident. Like, it, it's not necessarily like confidence, but it's like, it's very validating because it's kind of like a constant wave of like compliments, which is like not very normal in everyday life. I don't think I realized how much people like, paid attention to my appearance until I started streaming. Sometimes I do feel objectified, but it's not like by the entire internet or something. It's like literally a select few people. Like, and I think I was aware of that when I started streaming. Like when I start the stream, there is always the possibility someone's gonna come in and objectify me. Um, but I think I've been able to find a lot of like really good people and a lot of supportive people that kind of like outweigh that. Um, and I have, I have like a good support system of like other streamers who are always looking out for me and yeah so I don't mind it too much. This is in a sense like the stepping stones to like getting my dream which is like to be a popular musician you know like I'm building an audience and like this is very exciting for me um so I'm super grateful it's just like I don't, I don't know like I love it I love the attention I just want to make sure like I'm being healthy about it. Before I started Twitch, Twitch has this thing called the Creator Camp, which as I've learned, most of my streaming friends d like didn't even look at. I watched every single Creator Camp video to prepare to be a Twitch streamer. It was like hours of videos just being like, being like, this is the equipment you'll need. This is the this you'll need. Like I prepared, I prepared for my first stream. A lot of, it, it, they interviewed a lot of like streamers and asked them why they loved Twitch streaming so much. And they talk, always talked about building a community and like kind of feeling like they could make a safe space for people. And I've seen, I have some streamers who are like big, like I have some friends who are like big streamers now. And I can definitely see that. Like they have such a community. And especially once you like also have like a discord for your fans like where they can all just talk and interact and like share memes or like talk about this, how the stream went or even talk to you. Like it's definitely feels like kind of a giant friend group, which is really nice. Like I will stay up until like 5 a.m. in like Discord calls with like my friends. Like we all just like support each other. Yeah. One of the other reasons why I think streaming is really nice is because, you know, it's all live and how I was saying you get immediate feedback. It's so easy to make inside jokes with your like community that way. 
I remember someone was like, you should make toast on stream. And everyone was like, toaster, check, toaster, check. So I literally went to the kitchen and got my toaster. And I plugged it in like through a, like 10 extension cords. And I just like held my toaster up to the camera, my cuisine art toaster. And we all like counted down like the two minutes for my toast to finish toasting. And I buttered it and I ate it on stream and people, People loved it. Like people went crazy for this fucking toaster check. I shouldn't say this. I shouldn't say this. Bleep it. <laughs> Bleep. <laughs> I think that's why it's kind of so wonderful. Like you don't really get that type of stuff if you're just like alone, like filming a makeup video for YouTube or whatever. Like, like my streams can get so chaotic just because like the people in my chat are so funny. Um, and like they'll make a joke and then it just like catches on. We're all like laughing about it and. That's why I think it's really nice that it feels like a community or like a friend group or something.